welcome to the kingdom of heaven cracking the code we're gonna go ahead and start putting everything together now okay all right we realize now that remember there's one number one the Almighty the Creator Yahweh all right he wants one thing more than anything obedience okay number two there's only two roads one leads to life one leads to death only two spiritually speaking Number three, the three greatest gifts God's ever given mankind out of all the gifts he's given us is life itself. Without life, everything would be worthless, okay? But life is a precious gift, and we owe our life to that source of life. Number two is our gift of choice, our gift of free will. That way we know, or he knows, whether we are very sincere and we really want to exercise our will okay the gift of our will our free will in harmony with the will of the father because he has a will because ultimately it's whoever does his will is who's going to make it into the kingdom all right and number three was his son all right his son is the king of the kingdom all right and we're going to start putting all this together now all right now typically when you ask someone what is the actual kingdom of heaven if i were to ask you could you tell me what is the kingdom of heaven could you tell me well, typically, you usually get one of three responses. Okay, you you get either um, the kingdom uh, the kingdom of heaven is, is the highest heavens where God dwells. Okay, it's the high that that's heaven. All right, that's this is a, a, a mindset that people people have. Or I've even heard people say, "Well, the kingdom of heaven is in your heart." What? Yeah, yeah, I've actually heard that people people actually believe that, and there are people out there that are teaching the kingdom is in your heart. Um, and number three is the kingdom of heaven is here on earth. What? Kingdom of heaven here on earth? Well, actually, believe it or not, number three, that one right there, is the one that's closest to reality. Okay? The reality is that the kingdom is an actual kingdom, an actual government. Okay? Where? Here on earth. As strange as that sounds, that's, that's rule number one to understand about the kingdom. Is where's the kingdom of heaven? Here on earth. It's going to be comprised of a new heavens and a new earth. All right, keep that in mind. The kingdom is the new heavens and the new earth. All right. Whose kingdom is it? It's Yahweh's kingdom, the one number one. It belongs to him. Okay, Daniel 2.44. Let's open it with that. In the days of those kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom that will never be destroyed nor will it be left to another people. It will crush all those kingdoms and bring them to an end, but it, is, it itself will endure forever. Uh, Daniel 2.44, and this is referring to um, a dream that, that um, Nebuchadnezzar had here, King Nebuchadnezzar, but we're gonna, we'll get more into that here in a moment. But notice it said that in the days of those kings, okay, the kings it's referring to, uh, there's an actual dream in uh, chapter 2, uh, around 30, 32, 33, of King Nebuchadnezzar, he had a dream of a statue that was made up of different metals, elements from the earth. And those statues represented different kingdoms on the earth, okay? So Daniel was one of the prophets of, of Yahweh, but he was actually revealing this dream to him, okay? But it tells us right here that in the days of those kings all these kingdoms that's on the earth now that's all being set up it has been set up since this prophecy that God is going to set up a kingdom okay God already has his kingdom he lives in the highest heavens that's his dwelling so it says here that the God of heaven will set up a kingdom okay so that differentiates from God's dwelling highest heavens so that's that King, the kingdom is not going to heaven, that, if that makes any sense. It says that God is going to create this kingdom, all right? He will set up this kingdom during this time, all right? It also tells us that God has a, uh, a king that he had set in place, a human being that he tried and tested himself. This is what the whole Bible revolves around. Man sinned against the one number one, okay? And he had set up a way to re, uh, reconnect, reestablish, re, uh, just get back on track with the Father. But you've got to go through the Son now. He is the King of the Kingdom. Okay. So let's look at a couple of things here. Uh, he also, uh, let me share the scripture with you here. The, the Messiah, he was sharing with his uh, apostles. He says that you may eat and drink at my table. 
in my kingdom. All right, eating and drinking are human terms. Okay, so we need to get this clear. The Son of God is coming back to sit on the throne, judge mankind, and this will be his dwelling place. Earth is his dwelling place. We need to understand that. He says, you will eat with me and drink with me at my table in my kingdom, and you shall sit on thrones and judge the 12 tribes of Israel. So we also are talking about in this kingdom, you've got the king of kings. What kings? Well, other kings and judges all over the world. But in this particular case right here, he was talking to the actual apostles. And uh, he, uh, he said that you shall sit on thrones and judge the 12 tribes of Israel. Matthew 19, 28 as well. So you have these other co-judges, for lack of words. And we've got to understand that right now, the kingdom here on earth, um, Satan rules. Okay, This is actually Satan's kingdom. Satan has claimed it. That's why the world's in the shape it's in. Uh, scripture supports that. Uh, scripture tells us that Satan's throne is actually Pergamum, which is modern day uh, Turkey. All right, That's where his throne is established. Revelation 2, 12, 13. Also, Luke 4, 5, Satan offered the Son of God all the kingdoms of the world if, if the Son of God would actually do an act of worship, okay? So we've got to understand Satan owns the world. He owns the kingdoms, but God is coming back. His kingdom is going to destroy these kingdoms, and his Son will rule mankind and give them the, 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 the leader that they need. It's not these world leaders, okay, the chosen by crooked man. It's, it's, it's a person chosen by God himself. But you got to walk the walk. It's not for anybody. It says the Son of God died, that, that life, that, that sacrifice for all who are obedient. Hebrews 5, 9. Uh, let's look at some of the prophecies here. Luke 1, the angel telling Mary, the Lord God will give him, talking about the Son of God, Yeshua, the throne of his ancestor David. Okay, remember we understand that, that God made a promise to Abraham, that's the Abrahamic covenant, that the, all the, the nations will be blessed from his seed, that the offspring, that seed is his son, um, Messiah, Yeshua. Okay, the son of God was actually Abraham's son in a sense. And it's also King David. King David came through that lineage. Open up Matthew 1.1 and it gives you the lineage. It tells you that Yeshua is the offspring or the son of David and the son of Abraham. Okay, these are the ones that Yahweh made the covenant with. Yahweh told King David that one of his sons, okay, will sit on his throne, will rebuild his temple, and will rule man forever. This had a minor fulfillment in, in Solomon's time, okay, but Solomon died. The prophecy says we'll sit and, and rule the nation forever. Okay, that's the key, forever. This ties in with the kingdom. The, the, the angel told Mary that, that the Lord God will give him, talking about her son Yeshua, our Savior, the throne of his ancestor David. Yahweh, pro Yahweh promised that throne to, uh, to, to one of David's sons. He promised David one of his sons will get that throne. He says, your son will be king of Jacob's people forever and his kingdom will never end. That ties in with the kingdom that's going to be set up, never come to an end. Uh, Isaiah 9, 6, for us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And the government shall be on his shoulder, okay, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Isaiah 9, 7, of the increase of his government and of peace there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to establish it, okay. Uh, Daniel 7, 13, Daniel saw the Son of God, this human being actually going up to heaven to, to meet the Almighty, the Ancient of Days, to receive the gift of the kingdom, okay? Uh, Daniel 7, 13, in my vision at night, I looked and there before me was one like a son of man, a body nash, a human being, coming with the clouds of heaven. Whoa! We've got a human being that's on, coming on the clouds now? He was taken to the Ancient of Days. It says he approached the Ancient of Days and was led into his presence. So you've got the Son of God. After he died, he went to heaven, ascended to heaven. It says right here that he was taken to the Almighty, taken to the Ancient of Days. All right. And it says that the Almighty gave him authority, glory, and sovereign power. All peoples, keep that in mind, all peoples here on earth, nations and men of every language worshiped him. His dominion or kingdom 
course, is an everlasting dominion that will not pass away, and his kingdom is one that will never be destroyed. God's kingdom. Our, our, our Savior said to pray for God's kingdom to come. Your kingdom come. God has this. He's already He's established this kingdom, okay? This kingdom that is going to be ruled by his son, the Messiah, our Savior, okay? He had to be put to the test to prove that he was the one that can rule mankind. So the kingdom is in place. The king is in place. Okay, so now what? Well, we know that the kingdom belongs to, to the Father because we pray for, let your kingdom come. Okay, this kingdom that the Father created and, 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 and has established, okay? We gotta pray for it to come here and when his kingdom comes, it will eliminate the heavens that we know now, which is filled with demonic spirits, okay? The heavens are filled with evil spirits. Ephesians 6 talks about this. Okay, we've got to understand this. So the new heavens will be eliminating all the wicked spirits in our heavens, okay? The new earth will be destroying all of the unrighteous, all of the people who are disobedient, all the people who do not want to listen to God, whether they claim to be followers or not, that's regardless. Your, your confession means nothing, okay? What are your works? Are you, do you have the works? Are you proven to God that you have that? Your works will not save you. You're saved by God's grace, but you better give him something to work with, okay? And don't underestimate him and do not mock him because he's not one to be mocked. You will reap what you sow and you will be judged by his son. Okay, if you are judged worthy, you become a candidate on the road to life and you inherit the gift of the kingdom prepared by Yeshua's father. Okay, you are a sheep. That's, that's like the sheep and goat judgment there. Let's look at some more of these prophecies. Um, wow. Well, wow. it just goes on and on. Uh, one to keep in mind, Hebrews 5.1, okay, it's a very good one. It says, every high priest is selected from among men, okay, and is appointed to represent them in matters related to God. Yeshua is our high priest. He, he became our high priest, okay? He is our mediator between us and the Heavenly Father. You cannot get to God unless you go through His Son, okay? We've, we've covered that. But anyway, uh, let's go over this short answers real quick. What is the kingdom of heaven? Again, it's the new heavens and the new earth. It's very simple. Where, where the creator reestablishes his connection with his children. Okay, that's, that's what he wants ultimately is to reestablish his connection with you, with me, with all of us. Okay, where is it? It's here on earth. All right. <laughs> In fact, there's another good little scripture I saw here early. Let me just quote with it with you. Jeremiah 23, 5 and 6, plus Isaiah is loaded with all those future prophecies here on the earth, okay? But uh, uh, Jeremiah says, Behold, the days come, says the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch. This is the Son of God, Yeshua. And a king shall reign and prosper and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. Okay. So we need to understand the Son of God is coming back here to set up, and, and this is where he's going to live. He's one of us. This is this will be his kingdom. Uh, anyway, where is it here on earth? Why do we need it? Well, you well, pretty much sin ultimately. But do you remember the rebellious angels that came and started all this trouble to begin with? Well, we have heavens full of demonic spirits. We have earth full of demonic spirits and demonic people. The Son of God is coming back to eliminate those, okay? He's coming back to remove the, the garbage from the, from the planet, all right? Whose kingdom is it? Yahweh's kingdom. We established that. Uh, when will the kingdom be established here on earth? When? What is the time? Well, remember, that's why we have the signs. The signs. Yeshua told us when you start seeing the wars, reports of wars, earthquakes, food shortages, when you know all these things are taking place, know that I'm coming, okay? Know that the Son of God is near. Uh, well, these are taking place and they're getting worse and they're getting bigger and bigger. They're getting more massive, okay? More destructive. So the signs are here. 
So that's, it's just a matter of time when the actual kingdom will be established here on earth, okay? But the subjects are, are, are being weeded out in a sense now, you know, people are making a stand for uh, righteousness and for the Creator, and many are losing their lives in the process. Uh, so who are the subjects? These are the righteous. These are the ones that will be judged worthy on Judgment Day. These are the actual sheep. These are the ones that says, the Son of God says, go and inherit the kingdom prepared by my Father since the beginning. Who is its king? This is the Son of God. He's an actual son of Adam. Uh, son of Adam. So he's an actual human being, son of man, and he's actually uh, the Son of God. So he's the perfect candidate. The perfect candidate. So what happens to all the opposers of the kingdom? Well, the plagues of God, the wrath of God, the bowls of God's anger, and ultimately the lake of fire. You will be destroyed in the lake of fire. Okay? So, um... Let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and wrap it up right there. There's a couple of them right here I'm going to share with you. Uh, remember we talked about the, the David covenant. Uh, Yahweh said that uh, he's talking about the his son Yeshua. That but this is what he told King David. This is part of that David prophecy we talked about earlier. Second uh, Samuel seven twelve through sixteen. Yahweh says he will build a house for my name and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. Your royal house will remain in my presence forever. Your throne will be established forever. That's God speaking. God, according to the Bible, God cannot lie. Satan is a liar and the father of the lie, okay? So Yahweh told David, your throne will be established forever, okay? And, and, and Yeshua is the one who is going to sit on the throne of David. Uh, Psalms 132.11, Yahweh swore an oath to David. This is a truth he will not take back. I will set one of your own descendants on your throne. Okay. Psalms 89, 3 and 4. You, uh, you said, I have made a promise to my chosen one. I swore this oath to my servant David. I will make your dynasty continue forever. I built your throne to last throughout every generation. Okay. Matthew 1, 1 tells us that Yeshua is that son of David. All right. He is the one to fulfill that. The, the angel told Mary, he is the son of David. He'll sit on David's throne. The Bible tells us everything we need to know. You need to pick it up and read it. Okay. So the, the kingdom is an actual kingdom. Earth is a kingdom. All right. God's coming back. Yeshua's coming back to claim the kingdom, to get the garbage out of the kingdom. Uh, let's look at a couple more. Revelation eleven fifteen. The kingdom of this world has become the kingdom of our Lord and his Messiah. And he will rule as king forever and ever. And at Matthew, uh, I mean, Revelation ties in with the end times when God comes back and destroys the other kingdoms. And Yeshua claims this kingdom back. All right. Uh, here's some more. Matthew 8, 11. This is Yeshua speaking, the son of God. Uh, I say unto you that many shall come from the east and the west and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. Okay. Earthly terms. Uh, here's another one, Matthew 26, 29. I say unto you, I shall not drink henceforth of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it with you in my Father's kingdom. Let your kingdom come, okay? So when we say the Lord's Prayer, we actually are praying for God's kingdom, okay? Whose kingdom? Your kingdom. Let your kingdom come. Who's the one number one? Okay, do you see how this is all starting to fit together? Because you have to understand there's only one number one. All right, the kingdom belongs to him. It's his kingdom. And what he says goes. And he wants one thing more than anything. What is that? Obedience. Because if you're obedient, then guess what? Then now you become a candidate or a subject to enter into God's kingdom. What is that kingdom? That kingdom is a gift that God has given to mankind. He's given to his actual obedient children. Okay? And you never forget that you're being watched. You're being watched and you're being recorded. You're being documented. You're being everything that you do on a daily basis <laughs> is uh, is being documented. And I think if, if you can just make sense of that one statement, that, that, that everything you do will be held against you on Judgment Day. Whether you did good, if you did good, then, you know, that that's going to be to your advantage. And if you did really good, you can even bypass... You can actually bypass the actual judgment itself. John tells us that the um, that the actual in the judgment that there will be some which would be Yeshua's you know, brothers and sisters and, and, and true followers and believers 
that will actually, he said that we will never die, when, which can bypass the judgment. They're not even going to be judged. I mean, why does he want to judge his brothers and sisters? Okay. Let me uh, share a couple of things here with you real quick. And we're going to go over to the drawing board, but I want to leave this one thing with you real quick. Um, if I can find it, but it's something that's very, very serious. When it talks about Yeshua is going to send out um, the angels to weed out <laughs> the uh, the troublemakers. Okay, this is actually the uh, the actual sheep and goat judgment. But we're going to cover that more. Let me just wait and do that because we're going to do more. There's there's so much just within that subject itself. Uh, yeah, let me do that. But uh, he tells us he's coming back, angels, and they're going to weed out everything that's causing problems in his kingdom. You know. So anyway, let's go ahead and wrap it up there, and we're going to go to the drawing board and start really putting all this stuff together. Okay. So now we know what the who, what, when, where, why, basic overview. Okay. Who, whose kingdom? It's Yahweh, the one number one. It belongs to him. He created it while all these other man-made kingdoms were trying to make it. Okay. It also says his kingdom is going to destroy all these kingdoms. So if you support your kingdom, your country, if you support your land, your world over anybody else, over another country, if you're into patriotism, nationalism, you, you are following the devil because you are going to be destroyed. These are factions that have been set up by the devil to divide mankind. Okay, that's why war is so bad. That's why if you support country and, and people have been 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 what's the word uh, put under a spell you've got to break the spell you know you have been hypnotized that it's that it's good to support your country it's good to, to let man run you and rule you what has man done you know how much better is the world today than it was a while back you know two years ago ten years ago twenty years ago a hundred years ago if you want to know my opinion it's worse now than it never has been that's what the spirit tells me that's what the Everything tells me, every, everywhere I look, all the research I look into, you know, it's here, just like the Bible said, you know. So it's time to get serious about the kingdom because the kingdom is what's going to come and put an end to all these other kingdoms. It's going to be established here on the earth. God's son is going to rule it. God's son is going to judge mankind. God's son is going to get rid of the garbage. Now you can see why he's the greatest gift. Okay, one of the greatest guests. So let's go ahead and uh, wrap it up there, and we're going to go to the drawing board and start breaking it all down. Shalom. Shalom, shalom. Welcome to the drawing board. Now, today we're going to look at a couple of things considering the, uh, the, the kingdom itself. And what I want you to do is we're going to take a look at a couple of different models, okay? A couple of different models. Now, what I mean by models is that the mainstream model comprehension of the kingdom, how about concept? The concept of the kingdom, let's go with that. What most religions teach and what most people believe, and you may even be one, but I'm gonna share with you what's truth and what's not truth, okay? You need to make up your mind on what you wanna follow. Model number one, your basic, most people believe, okay, you're born, you live, you die, okay? You die, you're buried into the ground, okay? And they believe that when you die, you, a good person goes to heaven. Heaven is where the angels live, where God lives, and all the beautiful things where Aunt Marie lives, and Uncle Ted lives, and Cousin Joe lives. Everybody's in heaven. This is what people teach. This is the mainstream model, okay? This is not reality, guys. This is a, a deception of the devil. Keep this in mind, all right? People, we know we live and we die. You live, you die, all right? You go to the ground you came from. If you were good, you go to heaven. You get your angel wings. Well, I hate to disappoint you, but you're never gonna get wings. <laughs> You'll never be an angel. Dear God, I saw somebody on Facebook the other day, uh, an ad there, I think their grandmother died. Well, Granny just got her angel wings. People just don't understand. And it's sad, it really is. Uh, and the other side of the coin, is hell 
and hell is fire and torment and torture and that's where the devil lives you know and he's got his pitchfork and this is where all his little demons live and this is where all the bad people go okay bad people go and this is where good people go that's that's the basic concept in most people's mind that's that's the model or the concept of what the actual kingdom is or what what life is pretty much uh to be honest with you okay but think about that do you is that what is that your belief that well that's not a good belief you need to change your belief system this is this is misinformation all right we're going to tell you exactly what the kingdom is and what what reality is all right but let's keep something in mind here Here's something else that a lot of people think. They think when it comes to the kingdom and the return of the sun, uh, that, the, that the son of God's coming on the clouds, okay? And he's going to rapture. <laughs> he's, he's going to rapture everybody up to the, up to the clouds and to the heavens with him. Oh my God! I mean, there's so. Uh, now I ain't saying nothing. Let's let's we'll, we'll let the Bible talk. People teach this stuff. People teach this stuff. They teach that 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 the times that that here's what's called pre-tribulation rapture. Okay, and this is this this concept is known as the rapture, of course. Okay, they teach that the Son of God is coming back. When we start seeing all the signs, remember all the signs? Okay, the signs will start taking place. Son of God comes back and raptures everybody up to heaven. Okay, and then all the destruction is going to take place down here and the devil and the demons and the seven year tribulation and the great tribulation. Great tribulation. Remember the great tribulation. This is all the destruction going on in the world, okay? And then he comes back and he brings them back sometime over here. I don't know. That's one belief. Some people say that they stay up in heaven with him. Up here, remember heaven? Way up there where God dwells, where you're not going to go there. There's only been one human being to ever go there, okay? You've had a couple that went there in vision. You know, you got like Enoch. These were visions. You got the Apostle Paul. This was visions. But the only person, according to the Son of God himself, that has ever been to heaven is the Son of God. That's his words. Take it up with him. <laughs> this is demonic. This is the most absurd, garbage, demonic doctrine that's out there and is misleading probably billions. Uh, definitely millions, okay? This is not what the Bible teaches guys please please if you or your church or your group teaches this get out get out of that group grab your Bible and pray <laughs> pray the, to, for God to get you out of there and for God to teach you the truth do you even do that no most people go to their churches and let their pastors and their teachers and their leaders spoon feed them truth is truth man truth is truth but this is it this is a concept they, they think that when you start seeing the signs, when we, saw, we talk about the signs, the wars, reports of wars, earthquakes, everything, that's what we're in right now, the Great Tribulation, it's gonna get worse. Well, guess what? He hasn't come back and raptured everybody. One thing is the rapture is not a biblical teaching, okay? It's not a biblical teaching. So what does the Bible say, okay? Well, according to the Bible, is, let me share a couple of things with you real quick here. Uh, in fact, this is the scripture I was going to uh, share with you earlier. Uh, let me go ahead and sh uh, give you this one right here. This is Matthew 13. See, I like to let the Bible explain things. I don't care about people's concepts and ideas and ideology. Well, show me in the Bible and then let the Bible support that. And now we've got, we've got sound doctrine, okay? You don't have sound doctrine. You've got twisted eisegesis, studying, mis- misapplying the scriptures in the word of God okay Matthew 13 okay 41 please turn with me there let's go ahead and read it the son of man this is what happens when the son of man comes back first of all he's not taking nobody with him I hate to disappoint you nobody's going nowhere that's what the word of God says the word of God says that the son of man will come he will sit down on his throne the Son of Man, 
Okay, he's gonna sit down on his throne. What throne is that? Ah, remember the promised throne of David. He's acting as king and judge. This is the king judge role. When he comes back, he sits on his throne. The Bible tells us that. And then what does he do? First of all, he's going to have two groups of angels that he sends out. All right? One group of angels is going after a certain group of people, and another group of angels <laughs> is going after another group. Keep that in mind. That's what the word says. Matthew 13, 41, the Son of Man will send out his angels, okay, and they will weed out of his kingdom everything that causes sin and all who do evil. They will throw them into the fiery furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth, the lake of fire. Amen. Did you get that? The Son of God's coming back. He's going to send his angels out and they're going to weed out of his kingdom. Okay, this tells us the Son of God's coming back. He's sitting down. He's sending angels out to weed out the garbage. He gets rid of the wicked. You want to be left behind. <laughs> you want to be. Let me write that down. You want to be. You want to be left behind. According to the Bible, you want to be one that is left behind because the Bible says that God and His Son is removing the wicked and they're throwing them into the lake of fire. Okay? The Bible tells us the angels go out, they get one group and they get another group. The Son of God separates the two groups, the sheep to His right, goats to His left. That's what we call judgment. Okay? And the Bible clearly tells us that the Son of God has been put in charge of judging. Okay, that's that's the uh, that's that's the role that He plays. That's why He is the greatest gift that God gave us. Because now He knows what it's like to live, to love, to laugh, to hurt, to to die, and to even fight death itself. You know how much? What other kind of person do you need? The Son of God comes back, sits on the promised throne of David to be the king, promised king of Israel, ultimately, and the Gentiles, the nations, you, me, anybody who is doing right, hopefully you're doing right. Hopefully we're all doing right in, in, the, in the Father's eyes. However, the truth is we're all sinners, and the only way we can make it to the road to life, okay, is you've got to go through that sign, okay? Because listen to this. Here's what happens. Remember? The wicked, he says, he goes and he weeds out the wicked from his kingdom. The word tells his kingdom and he throws them in the lake of fire. They burn them up. And then the king will say to those on his right, the sheep, the righteous, those who are obedient, those who love God and obey his commands, okay, his children. The king, the king, will say to those on his right, come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom, prepared for you since the creation of the world. Amen. Come inherit the kingdom, salvation. You have been saved. You're not going to be destroyed. Salvation in the kingdom. What kingdom? The kingdom that God has prepared since the beginning. This is God's kingdom. Your kingdom come. Okay. The son of God comes. He sits down. He judges. You either make it on the road to life into the kingdom. You inherit the kingdom. Matthew, let's write that down. Matthew 25, 34. Okay? These two scriptures right here ultimately tell you exactly what it is. 